What's up guys? So today I'm gonna talk about a very interesting topic, uh, at least interesting to me since I um, am doing a project that relates to this. Um, it, it's basically virtual reality and how uh, virtual reality plays into treating uh, various types of pain. Um, most people associate virtual reality with um, games and whatnot, but um, there are actually therapeutic uses for uh, virtual reality. Um, you know, the topic today is pain management and whether it's effective or not, but people have been using it for rehab and, and other stuff as well. So let's take a look at, uh, at several papers now while I was doing my research. Um, that I ran into. So the first is a uh, what they call a meta-analysis. Essentially, what that means for those of you who are not familiar with it is basically it's taking it's looking at a number of different research papers and being able to synthesize them together uh, so that they make sense. Um, and so here uh, they look at a number of different conditions, and I think it's actually four conditions that they are looking at through a number of different uh, studies. So here they, they scan through like 12,000 studies or so, um, and then at the end they uh, basically came up with a, from those, they filter out stuff that's not relevant or uh, the numbers don't add up and so forth. And they basically uh, ended up with uh, looking at um, several, actually four conditions. One, um, which you see um, later, is uh, surgical procedures, pain from that. Uh, others are uh, burns, wound care, and then the physical rehab associated with burns and then also needle pain. Um, it's very interesting in the fact that when they're looking at virtual reality treatment and whether that uh, affects how people perceive the pain, uh, for burns, wound care, and surgical procedures, there's no effect. And then for um, needles and burns physical therapy, there are uh, some effects, which, uh, which helps. So this is another study which actually looks at a number of different conditions. This is actually a more interesting uh, paper. Um, and so overall, they have a definition for what uh, virtual reality is and, and so forth. But really, they're looking at different types of pain. So here it's acute pain. It's meaning like acute meaning how um, sudden onset of it and uh, severity. And so they look at uh, thermal pain, which is like heat. Can people withstand heat? Um, can they withstand electrocution uh, type of pain both together, chronic pain? Um, and then they look at different conditions uh, that people suffer, like fibromyalgia, which is like unspecific pain throughout the body, mind grain, phantom limb uh, pain, basically is when you are missing a limb, you, you, you feel pain with that, from that. And essentially, all of these basically show that there are um, benefits associated with using a virtual reality, uh, virtual reality distraction, so to speak. So there's games, uh, this crowd slide is being talked about here and um, other types of similar uh, mechanisms that people use for, for VR. What's interesting is on the right hand side there, they're basically talking about five different uh, characteristics of what makes a good VR uh, therapeutic. Uh, one which is, it has to be immersive. People have to be immersed into it. Um, then uh, people need to have a uh, degree of social interaction, being able to customize their specific scenario, um, and having some sort of avatar that allows them to uh, feel like they're in the game. Um, so that when they're moving, the avatar moves and, and so forth. Um, and then um, there's also an aspect of um, being able to uh, engage, be engaged in the game. Uh, um, and so uh, that really helps. Um, and then we looked at in the latter part of that study also talked about, you know, for the hospital, uh, how that works. And so this study here that we just briefly showed is that um, in the hospital, they looked at 50 patient, uh, 100 patients, but 50 uh, pairs of patients where um, the virtual reality does help lessen the pain. Um, here, they talked about another condition for cardiac surgery, uh, basically managing post uh, cardiac surgery pain and how VR may be able to help with that. And here, they're using something called a Leckert scale um, and also monitoring them physiological effects like breathing and whatnot and shows that pain does, um, uh, is, is attenuated. Um, by using VR therapy. Um, 
So a lot of it has to do with uh, distraction. Um, this paper here actually looks at some of the physiological aspects of how VR actually affects various pathways and, and, and so forth um, within the individual. So meaning there are actually some physical changes that occur maybe at the, uh, um, at the um, uh, organ level, system level, uh, that is not necessarily uh, perceivable with just the eye, but with various tools and measurements like functional MRIs and, and so forth, um, you can see uh, changes and people propose that there are different pathways uh, being affected, right? Um, that it's not just distraction in itself, or maybe distraction in itself um, helps with that because um, that lessens the um, the effect of pain on those pathways because now they have to uh, be used to do other things. And what's interesting there too is they talked about how uh, children react differently to VR therapy than, uh, than adults. And one of the papers earlier also said the same thing, uh, meaning children, um, it's easier for them to feel present uh, in a, a virtual reality environment than adults. Um, so that may have some implications with regards to how those are designed. Um, and here, just going through the different um, uh, conditions that VR therapy could be helpful for. So different types of pain, like cancer pain, you see there. Um, and besides all the procedural stuff, and then chronic pain. Uh, what's interesting here is all, all these types of paper. Um, they basically talked about that. You know, there are studies, but the studies themselves are scattered throughout um, literature and, and throughout different sites. And it's very hard to also do something called blinding, which is to make the treatment and the control, which is sort of your baseline, your your, your standard that you're comparing the treatment to, uh, blind it from the investigator. So that means the investigator does not know what you're actually looking at so that there's no biases and, and so forth. Because, I mean, if you're being treated for VR, it's pretty obvious that you're being treated. So, um, but either way, I think this uh, all of these papers basically show that there are promises uh, with regards to using this therapy as opposed to uh, pharmacological solutions and whatnot, but uh, more research needs to be done. So anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, agree, disagree, um, find this interesting or not.